I think that one of the most important tools in managing your finances is maintaining a budget. Yet only about 30% of Americans maintain one. Why is that? Maybe they think that having a budget is too stressful. Maybe they don't like the way it makes them feel about their finances. Or maybe they think they don't make enough money to use a budget. But whatever the reason, it is not a good enough one not to maintain and use a budget. A budget is a projection of what you expect to earn and spend in a specific time frame. It can help you with short-term and long-term financial goals. It can keep you from overspending and it can help you to prepare for emergencies and for retirement. And it does this by helping you to improve your relationship with money. A budget has three main components, income, expenses, and what I like to call the leftover. The leftover is what is left when you remove all of your current expenses from your current income. It can be a surplus, a deficit, or you can break even. A surplus means that you are spending less than you earn. A deficit means that you earn less than you spend. And if you break even, it means that you are spending the exact same amount that you earn, so nothing is left. The leftover is what determines the type of relationship that you have with money. A surplus, or if you break even, means that you have a more positive relationship with money. And if you have a deficit, this is an indication that you have a poor relationship with money. So how do you build a more positive relationship with money? Simply by achieving a budget surplus. There are three ways to do this. You can increase your income, you can reduce your expenses, or a combination of both. Increasing your income will take time. And even if you are able to increase your income, if you are unable to manage your spending, you are still not going to be able to achieve a budget surplus. However, reducing your expenses is something that you can do instantaneously. And because you can do it immediately, this is the area of the budget I'm going to be focusing on to talk about achieving a budget surplus. Expenses are broken down into two categories. They can be fixed or they can be variable. They can also be further broken down into needs and wants. It's also good to organize your expenses in order of importance, from most important to least important. This makes it easier to identify the first expenses that will go in the event that a budget surplus is in jeopardy. Here is a budget estimate that has a deficit of over $350. By making adjustments to the last two expenses in the one section will not only eliminate the deficit, but it will also lead to a budget surplus. And if after cutting all that you can in the wants category and you still don't have a surplus, it means that you will have to look at reducing your needs. Using the same example as before, but changing the net income to 4,800, you see that even if all of the expenses in the one section were eliminated, there still would not be a budget surplus. So if you are renting, you may need to find a cheaper apartment or find a way to reduce the cost of some other need. The bottom line is you cannot sustain a budget deficit for an extended period of time and not experience long-term financial hardship. If you want to find out why I have investments and emergency savings as expenses in the needs section of the budget, you should watch my video on the best budgeting spreadsheet. Once you have made a decision to use a budget to build a positive money relationship, there are some rules that you can follow to get the most out of budgeting, which will depend on your specific financial circumstance. There are many rules, but the ones that I'm going to talk about are rules that I've used and one of which I'm currently using. These rules are recommendations on how you should allocate your net income across your savings, your needs, and your wants. 
The 50-30-20 budget rule recommends that 50% of your net income should go towards your needs, 30% of your net income should go towards your wants, and the remaining 20% should go towards your savings. Here is what a net income of 5350 looks like when allocated across your savings, your needs, and your wants. I think that most people should be able to use this rule. For me, it is the default budget rule. Once you are able to implement this rule on a consistent basis, you should have more success when you transition to other budget rules. The 60-30-10 rule recommends that 60% of your net income should go towards your savings, 30% should go towards your needs, and only 10% should go towards your wants. Here's an example of how the same net income of $5,350 would be allocated across the three areas. This rule may be best for adult children still living at home since their expenses should be low. It may also be used by high income earners or anybody with a relatively low expense to income ratio. The 50-40-10 budget rule recommends that 50% of your net income should go towards your needs, 40% should go towards savings, and the remaining 10% should go towards your wants. Once again, here is what a net income of $5,350 will look like once allocated across the different categories. This rule may be best for building up your emergency funds or if you are saving towards a large purchase like a new HVAC system or even a car. I hope you had as much fun watching this video as I did making it. Budgeting like anything else, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Budgeting is the only way to effectively control your expenses. Our financial situation doesn't usually improve just because we start to earn more. For most people, the more they earn, the more they spend. There are those who have had significant increases in income, but their financial circumstances remain the same because their relationship with money remains poor. If you were earning $50,000 per year and you got an increase to $55,000 per year, you should still live as if you're earning $50,000 per year for at least a year. That extra $5,000 should go towards building up your emergency funds or be invested. If you want to see more videos like this, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.